600 horsepower Pratt and Whitney radial engine. They generate 600 horsepower. They were these aircraft were built between 1938 and 1945. This year is the 71st year that the North American trainer known for the Navy, known by the Navy as the SNJ, and known by the United, United States Army Air Force as the AT-6, Advanced Trainer 6. Over 22, or close to 22,000 copies of these and their variants were flown by the Navy, the Army Air Force, the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Royal Air Force, and another nearly 25 other allied nations during World War II. As a matter of fact, planes are. They even saw service during the Korean conflict. Let's listen to the sound of these Pratt and Whitney engines as they spool up. Gentlemen, I want to introduce all of you to the world famous Sky Typers, sponsored by Geico Insurance. The squadron is comprised of five 1940 vintage North American SNJ 2 aircraft. These aircraft were built to train World War II military pilots to fly combat airplanes. Geico which stands for Government Employees Insurance Company, was there as well. Established in 1936. Ladies and gentlemen, from behind you, I want to introduce you to the Geico Sky Typers, six aircraft acting as one, allowing large numbers of aircraft to fly through the skies. The flight leaders at the front with his wingman and element flight leaders taking their positions around him. In the Delta Pass, ladies and gentlemen, stand by for the smoke as team leader Larry Arkin calls, smoke on, ready now. Here come the Geico Sky Typers. today. Let me introduce the pilots to you. Leading the flight is Larry Arkin with Steve Kapoor. At the right wing is Ken Johansson. The left wing is Rob Steele. The lead solo is Steve Salmers. And the wing solo is Tom Daly. I also want to recognize another key pilot, two other key pilots on our team, Jim Record and also Bob Johansson. Now watch as the Sky Typers maneuver in this Delta formation. This is very difficult due to the widespread of the aircraft, their limited available power, and their thick, straight wings. These aircraft weigh about 5,500 pounds each and have a very nice but underpowered 600 horsepower Pratt & Whitney radial engine on them known as the Pratt & Whitney R1340. Notice as the pilots constantly fight to maintain their wingtip, their position, while maintaining a clearance of only one foot wingtip to wingtip. They make it look so easy, even a caveman could do it. Two, three, four. Now, watch them as they get away from us. The flight's going to release two members to investigate a bogey, an unidentified aircraft that may be a threat. As they separate, watch for the outside aircraft on either side. They will cross, pulling in two and through each other's path in order to clear the area behind them. Let's watch. Here comes the cross, banking hard, right through each other's smoke. How about that? After identifying the threat as a bandit, the solos are now in position to demonstrate their next maneuver. The opposing two solo, uh, the, the opposing solo, two circle guns pass. When two aircraft engage in air-to-air -air maneuvering, they attempt to pass as close as possible to one another with two options. One, maneuver for the advantage, or two, escape to safety. Turning towards each other would put both aircraft in separate or two circles as each tries to outturn his opponent. Diving for energy now, 
The two solos approach one another in a descending head-to-head -head engagement at a closure rate of 320 miles per hour. Close a beam, they'll pitch up and roll into each other, passing canopy to canopy just 50 feet apart. Cameras ready, watch for the pitch up, watch for the roll, watch for the cross. There they go again. Now as the solos clear, I want you to watch for the rest of the formation to the front and left of show center. They will demonstrate another basic skill that, that's taught to our men and women in flight school, something known as a turning rejoin. When aircraft are separated for some reason, such as with individual takeoffs, they need to get back together or rejoin to continue with the mission. One method is for the lead aircraft to start a turn and have the other aircraft, as you see them approaching ahead and to the left, to turn by adding power and putting their nose in front of the lead to fly a shorter distance. The pilots must know where each other is and how to maneuver their aircraft to get on board as quickly and as safely as possible. Now let's watch as the Geico Sky Typers as they show you how all the formation teams, including the Jets, accomplish a rejoin. Today, they will rejoin into a VIC or V formation. As they rejoin, the formation will treat you to a Victor S or a snake pass. You'll get a good view of the aircraft and the formation as they wind their way in front of you, changing from belly up to canopy up. You know, flying these World War II aircraft requires an unusual set of skills. Sky Typer pilots have to be able to fly large tail wheeled aircraft as well as being accomplished formation pilots. It's not always easy to find the right match and the majority of the pilots here today are former Navy and Air Force pilots. Coming through on the Snake Pass, Larry Arkin in the lead and on the wings we've got Ken Johansson and Rob Steele. growl you hear right there is actually the sound of the propeller tips, those Hamilton standard propeller tips going supersonic at about 2500 RPM. Now, if we look to the left and right, you can see the solos once again. They come head to head from both the right and the left for the solo one circle guns pass. The difference between this and a two circle pass is that both aircraft will turn in the same direction. This type of air to air and turning engagement is used when one aircraft has superior maneuvering ability or to take advantage of a mistake. Just prior to crossing, lead solo will pitch up and roll too early, allowing his opponent to fly high and behind him, getting an obvious advantage. Let's watch. On the left now, we'll see him turn around and try to get away. This allows his attacker to maneuver into a gun's firing position, or as the aviators say, at his six o'clock. Now watch as the lead aircraft tries to jink and stay out of trouble. As we see the smoke being popped on the trailing aircraft, he's simulating his guns being fired at the lead aircraft that's trying to get away. And as he shoots and gets a bullet on target, we see smoke from the lead aircraft indicating he has been hit. formation change. Although this one is very unique and demanding, the V formation or the VIC formation you just witnessed has gone from flat to vertical. The references the wingmen use must change completely as they now have to look almost straight up and lead becomes their world. Watch as the vertical dime, vertical VIC, I should say, approaches, then peels off or breaks down the runway into a trail position, one following the other. There's Larry Arkin, Ken Johansson, and Rob Steele. Sky Tigers, one, two, and three. Now, look straight ahead again. Smoke is on on the two solos. 
They're approaching for a simulated bomb run. To attack a target, sometimes you gotta stay low under radar coverage, fly to a point that's been pre-identified through map study, pull up sharply, acquire the target, and then gain enough altitude to drop your bombs. Oh, and that's not all. Different climb angles and attack directions help confuse the gunners on the ground. Here's the pop-up, watch them roll in on the target, and this is the Solo's bomb run. The Solos exit is a defensive team now, clearing their six and searching for, for the formation. In the military, a flight of two aircraft is the smallest element to fly from an echelon position. Today, the military uses this formation to line up for a break to landing maneuver, either over an airport or over a ship. Now, if all five aircraft are together, they will simulate a strafing attack on the same ground target the Solos have just bombed. Here they come in that beautiful echelon or all to one side formation. This is called echelon left. And it's really hard on them as each bit of movement is magnified as it goes through the formation. And the Geico Sky Typers are holding their formation absolutely beautifully. These five World War II trainers doing a great Geico demonstration for you today. Sitting off to your left, flight lead will reform the squadron with yet another rejoin, only this time into the Geico Skytyper fan formation. Today these aircraft have taken on a new role of writing giant messages in the sky. We'll see Larry Arkin as he guides the formation right towards show center. If you've got cameras, this is a great chance to catch the Geico Skytyper fan formation as they approach at about 145 or 150 miles per hour maneuvering towards center, towards show center. Stand by for Larry Arkin in that lead with Steve Kapoor running computers in the back. As they get ready to break, stand by for the smoke. Here it is, and here comes the Geico Sky Typers fan pass. Saluting the men and women of all the branches of our United States. Now continue to watch the aircraft as they rejoin, flying straight ahead, then reverse back to give you one more exciting opportunity to place these magnificent World War II icons indelibly in your minds and cameras. A paraffin-based oil that's used in the concrete industry from, so that concrete, drying concrete, won't stick to the wooden forms. And since it has to be handled by human hands, it's got to be EPA and environmentally safe. And so they inject this oil into the exhaust sacks of these airplanes and we get this great smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, as they come by, how about a nice round of applause for the Sky Typers! Catching up, Larry Arkin, Ken Johansson, Rob Steele, Steve Salmers, and in number five smoke on Tom Daly. They'll be bringing them into land. The advanced trainers. Prior to America's entry into the war of World War II on December 8, 1941, the day 